Hey guys, it's Todd. Welcome back to my channel. So today we're switching things up a little bit. I'm doing a voiceover video because I'm counting down my top four recipes for the summer that are super easy to make for kids, for teens, for adults. These are just recipes when you need a quick snack or you need to quench your thirst in the summer. These are what you're gonna wanna be making. They're so easy, so delicious, so simple. And yeah, let's just get started. We're making a mixed berry smoothie, then Muddy Buddies, bruschetta, and a mojito. All right, let's get into the video. First up, I'm starting off with the easiest out of them all, which is a mixed berry smoothie. It is so easy, you could have it for breakfast, you could have it later in the day to cool you off from the summer heat. It is literally like three or four ingredients, the easiest thing on earth. So to start over here, I have a bowl of mixed berries. It is frozen, there are strawberries and blueberries, you can use any type of berries. Pour those right into your blender. And then to this, we're gonna add in some orange juice. Now, yes, I poured the orange juice from the container into this bottle, uh, just to be fancy. So you're gonna pour that into the blender, just kind of cover it halfway, however much you like. It'll just depend on how thick it will be in the end. And then to that, I'm gonna add in some honey. I like to add a little honey just for some sweetness. Uh, you can leave it out if you wanna cut down the sugar. Now we're just gonna blend it up until it is nice and fully blended up. You want it to be a nice, thick smoothie at the end. You guys will see. So now we're gonna start pouring into there and it's actually very, very thick. So kind of use a spoon to get it all in there and look at that beautiful purple color. Like, oh my God, is that not exactly what you want after a long heat filled summer day outside? So just pour that all into there and that is literally it. That is how you make this smoothie. It is so easy, so delicious, so refreshing. I mean, that is literally all I want on a hot summer day. Uh, I don't even know if you wanna consider this recipe, but it's just like super easy and quick to make. So yeah, the UI is gonna love this one. It's for people of all ages, kids, adults, everything in between. A mixed berry smoothie is what you want for the summer. Next up, we are making Muddy Buddies. And now before we get started with this, I'm just gonna warn you, Muddy Buddies are my favorite thing in the entire world. So if I get a little overexcited in this voiceover, I apologize in advance. So you know what, sorry, not sorry. Okay, let's get started. So Muddy Buddies are the most delicious thing ever. And all you gotta do to start is heat up like half an inch of water in a pot and put a bigger bowl on top of that to create a double boiler and add in some chocolate into there. Next up, we're going to add in some margarine or butter, you can use either of them, and kind of just mix that together until it starts melting. It's very important that you use a very low flame and slowly melt this. If you have your flame that's too high and it's too hot, the chocolate will kind of clump up and be bad. So you just want to do it on a low flame, slowly melt it, and now look how good that chocolate looks. Oh my god, I literally could jump through the screen or I guess the microphone and just eat the chocolate plain. Okay, that looks so good. Okay, Eitan, enough showing off the chocolate. Now let's add in the peanut butter, which is the best part of the whole thing. So add in the peanut butter, which which gives it such a good flavor. And you know, just mix that all in. Um, we wanna make sure that it fully is combined with the chocolate, which will then we're gonna mix into the cereal. Like guys, I literally, I, I wanna eat this right now. It is one of the wonders of the world. Like seriously. Now that it's all melted, we're going to pour it over some Czech cereal. Uh, not sponsored or anything, it's just the best thing to make money buddies with. So pour that all over there and you're going to really want to mix this up until it is fully combined. You know, this is kind of a workout. You're really going to get your hands in there, mix it, mix it, mix it until every single piece is combined. If there's a piece that is not coated in the chocolate, then you have failed at making money buddies, let me just tell you. So you want to make sure that every single piece is coated in the chocolate peanut butter mixture. And then once it's coated, you're going to take some powdered sugar and pour that powdered sugar all over it. And now you wanna to put too much powdered sugar. If you think it's too much powdered sugar, add in double that amount, like I'm serious. You're gonna add in your, about half of the powdered sugar that I tell you to, mix until it's fully combined, add in the rest until it is literally just covered in the powdered sugar. I mean covered. You're then gonna pop it in the freezer. You can eat it right away, but I much like it more when you pop it in the freezer. Let it sit in the freezer for about half an hour or so just until it gets nice and cold, and I like to eat it super cold. It is the best snack in the history universe. Don't even at me on this. Uh, Life-changing. Now we are making tomato bruschetta. We are taking a trip with our mouths to Italy and eating this delicious Italian antipasto or antipasta, I don't know how you pronounce it. <laughs> and we are making this, it is so delicious. And all you gotta do to start is take a nice long French bread. You could probably use whatever bread you have in the house to make this, but this long type of bread is what you want. That'll make it perfect. And you're gonna cut it till about half of an inch to an inch thick. And in this pan, we are heating up some olive oil, nice extra virgin olive oil and place into the pan our pieces of bread that we cut. Make sure those bottoms get nice and soaked in that olive oil, and you're gonna put them on a low flame, medium low flame, and you're gonna let them kind of fry, get nice and crispy on the bottom. Meanwhile, we're going to prepare the tomato mixture. So right here I have a plum tomato. You can also use a Roma tomato. Really whatever type of tomato you have in the house uh, will do for this, like 
just do with what you have. You're gonna cut out the inside. If you wanna leave it out, you can. Uh, I just don't like using it, so we're just gonna throw that away. And we're now going to cut this into a medium to small dice. So cut it into long strips, just like this. Uh, really just go through all that. Make sure you be very careful. It's very easy to cut yourself with any tomatoes. Turn them around and then do cuts the opposite way, which will get you that nice perfect dice and just repeat that with the rest of your tomatoes. All right, now let's check on our bread. Looks like it's smoking up a little bit. Um, okay, we, it's a little bit crispier, as Cardi B would say, a little rough around the edges or whatever, uh, but that's okay. We'll just continue flipping our bread. Hopefully the others will be really good. Okay, looks like they are. All good, just a little extra crispy. Uh, never hurt anyone. Next up, we're going to cut up some of our garlic into a nice dice, so make those long cuts down, not cutting all the way. Do a side cut. These are not the official terms. And then cut it all the way through to make this fine dice. And then just pour it into all of your tomatoes that you cut up. Super easy and simple. Right over here we have a red onion, which is what you want to use for this. Same exact technique um, as cutting the garlic, because we're just going to get a nice large dice on these to add them into our tomatoes. And just look at that. I mean, how good does that dice look? It's like so easy, so perfect. Maybe I should do a video. Comment down below. Do you want to see me do a video on how to correctly cut onions? Add those straight into there. Get that all in there. The onion and tomato is so good together. Mix it all up. And the garlic. Can't forget about that. Add in some olive oil for that nice texture and the flavor, and then finally some balsamic vinegar, which will give it a nice zing, a nice hit of flavor, and it'll affect the color. Add in some salt, obviously, and then just mix it all together. You really wanna get all those flavors to mix together, to marry together, just become this absolute deliciousness. Take our bread out of the pan, uh, that's a little bit crispy, as we, as we said before, and spoon on top that tomato mixture. Oh my God, I wanna jump through right now and eat this. It looks incredible. And just repeat that with the rest of the pieces of bread. Next up, we're going to top it with a little bit of basil. We're just going to chiffon on it where you roll up the basil leaves, then slice them like that into those thin little ribbons and top them on top of the bruschetta. I mean, how good does that look? It is really simple, really easy. It's great as an appetizer before a meal. If you're having a dinner party, you can put it out. Or if you just want a super easy and delicious snack, it is perfect for that. It is crunchy bread on the bottom. Then that nice refreshing tomato, the zing from the onion, the flavor from the balsamic vinegar. It is exactly what you want for the summer. And... It's a showstopper. Lastly, we're making my famous watermelon mojitos. This version I'm making is a mocktail, so we are leaving out the alcohol, but if you're an adult and you wanna put alcohol in it, traditionally rum is used in mojitos, but we're just gonna leave that out and make a mocktail. So let's just get started. The first part that we're making is the simple syrup. Simple syrup is really kind of the base of many cocktails, or in this case, a mocktail. It's super simple. We're just gonna put on a low flame, some water and sugar, equal parts of water and sugar. We're then gonna cook that, stirring just until all of the sugar is dissolved and it kind it comes together in a homogenous mixture and that is going to be what sweetens our drink. Next up, we're gonna grab some of our cubed watermelon. I just cut up a fresh watermelon into a bunch of cubes and place them in a fine mesh strainer that's inside of a bowl. And you're gonna wanna use a wooden spoon to just press that watermelon down so that all the juice falls out and goes into the bowl underneath it. If you are short on time, you can just pop the watermelon in a blender and blend it up and then put it through the, the mesh strainer. But to be honest, I like to do it more like this. I think it comes out much better when you do it by hand. It's worth the extra few minutes. Next up, we are making the lime mint sugar. So we're gonna just right now chop up some of our fresh mint until it is really nice and finely chopped up and add that whoa all right we just spilled a lot of the ice let's put that back in there that was unexpected and we're just gonna now put that right into our sugar and we're also going to grate in some freshly grated lime zest this will give it like a nice zing add some color just like another layer of flavor in our mocktail now just mix it all together until it is fully combined next up we're going to start preparing our cups so over here i'm just going to take a lime slice and use it to wet the rim of our glass Turn it upside down into the sugar that we just made and get that nice coating on the rim. I mean, how good does that look? It's just like another way to add another texture and flavor into there. Now into our shaker, we're putting some fresh mint and using the end of a wooden spoon to muddle it. This is really gonna bring out the essential oils and flavors from the mint. And to that, we're also gonna add in some 
lime and just do the same to release all the lime juices, also getting some of the essential oils from the zest. Then as you see, we just added in the simple syrup and also some of the watermelon juice. Then we're gonna top it off with some ice to really cool down the drink. And I just like to put a little actually sprinkle of the sugar that we made just for a little extra flavor. Put on the top and then it is shaking time. We're gonna wanna shake that up. And what this is gonna do is really combine everything, all the oils, all of the flavors, all the, ever, just everything. It's gonna be all combined and the ice is really gonna allow it to get super nice and cold. Pour it into the prepared glasses. I also like to put some extra cubes of the watermelon in there. And there you go, that is all you gotta do. Take a lime wedge, put it on top, and enjoy your drink. That is how easy it is to make this watermelon mojito. It is perfect for any time you need a refreshing drink that's not just like your classic lemonade. This is a step up from that. It is super delicious, super refreshing, and is perfect for parties, it's perfect for when you just need a snack, or to go along with any meal. You guys are gonna love this. It is so delicious and so refreshing. All right, there you go, those are my top for recipes for the summer that are super easy to make for kids, for adults, for everyone. As always, links to all the recipes are in the description box below, along with the links to all my social media, to shopaton.com, which is where you can find my merch, my food socks, all that is down there. And if you haven't already, be sure to click that big red subscribe button. It's big, it's red, it's free. Click it to be the first one I post new videos. Hit that like button if you enjoyed watching and comment down below what is your favorite food to eat in the summer. And I'll see you in the next one on Monday. All right, bye.